going to be, we're going to now talk about the code itself um, uh, with uh, Julie Ellis from uh, the clerk's office to tell us a little bit about how uh, this process gets done uh, from a technology and process perspective. Julie. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Um, so this this portion of the program wasn't initially going to be me. So let, let me back up. Who am I? Um, first of all, I'm an attorney. I work for is this still still working? Um, I'm an attorney. I work for uh, the clerk's office. I am our policy director and the head of our legal affairs. Um, but if anyone read the agenda for tonight's event, this portion of the program was initially conceived of to be presented by Man Legal, who is American Legal. American Legal is our code publisher. Um, and so they wanted to be here. In fact, they had tickets, but unfortunately, at the end of the day, they ended up having some scheduling conflicts. Uh, can you guys hear me if I just get rid of this? Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Uh, so they had some scheduling conflicts, so Dan asked me to step in and give you some information uh, on what AmLegal does and really what the process of codification is. When I, when I step back and, and I ask myself why, why would Dan O'Neill be interested in American legal publishing? Why would they be interested um, in, in the process of putting together this book, really? Um, it, it occurred to me that the players involved and the process of developing the municipal code is very informative to what, uh, to what is the value of the code. What is a code? I mean, that is a question that I, I don't think many of us step back and ask ourselves. Um, it's not terribly intuitive, so what we're going to do today is I'm going to walk through not just who the players are, but what, uh, how this, this product, this code, and I'm old school, so I brought the actual physical code, oh. how this thing comes to exist oh. and what the value of it is. Uh, so let me, let me start by reading to you some facts about American legal publishing. These came from them. They're a great partner of ours. Um, and so they're based in Cincinnati, Ohio, and they've been in the business of publishing since 1934. Um, American legal publishing has been codifying ordinances set, uh, for years, since 1934, for cities like Chicago, San Francisco, Los Angeles, San Jose. So uh, they're in some pretty big markets. Um, the services that they provide, the codification services, it's the systematic collection of ordinances um, and integration into a, a concise document. And the, this process is done. Uh, oh, oh, that will make more sense in just a couple of minutes. Um, this process is done by 16 attorneys, a whole lot of paralegals, and a lot of support staff. Um, so it really is a legal process. And the way that, that American legal views themselves, and I'm just going to read this directly from, from their little piece of paper here, um, because I think it's important. Um, the way that they have, we have distinguished ourselves from other legal publishers is our view that the client owns their source material. We play a crucial role in making laws readily available and usable to the general public, but we do not own the law. That is their uh, company philosophy. So again, when we talk about codification, it, it's going to inform what this thing is, right? So let's start with a broad definition. A, a legal code is a, a, co a set of laws that's general in nature, it's permanent, it's existing law, and this is important, it's organized by subject matter. Anyone who's ever picked up a statute and read it probably takes that for granted. Um, however, if you're sitting here and looking at me and going, oh my god, I just lost five minutes of my life that I'll never get back, 
Um, it doesn't start that way. And so to understand how valuable this is, we're going to do a little crash course on legislation, particularly or specifically legislation, the legislative process, and legislative documents in the city of Chicago. <laughs> All right. So we start with the basics here, right? The city council meets once a month. And the, all of our legislators come together, and they bring to us thousands of legislative ideas. When I say thousands of legislative ideas, I mean thousands of them. Let me turn this chair around. So our aldermen show up, and they hand us at the city clerk's office each one of these pieces of paper um, is an idea. It is a proposal. It is nothing substantively binding yet. They give it to us, and the way that it is organized at this point in time is by sponsor. Whose idea is it? And if you think about it, that makes sense because there's no other possible organization at this point. We have absolutely no idea what's in this yet. As soon as we get that information, we immediately start reorganizing it. And the way that we reorganize it is by the, the body that's going to work on it. Who is going to look at this matter? And that's when we start, we take each one of these, we break it down to the committee that it's going to be referred to. If you think about the city council, right, not all 50 members are going to consider every single piece of legislation. They would never go home. The working bodies are the committees. Um, so ideas that come to us, they can be very simple, like we'd like to put an awning at Wells and Harrison. Please approve that concept. Or they can be very complicated ideas. Um, an example of a very complicated idea is the recent uh, renegotiation of the parking meters, right? So the parking meter deal was both code it was municipal code amendments. It was also the restructuring um, and the renegotiation of a contract. So these are both legally binding documents, once passed, but they're very different in nature. And that's going to be relevant to our conversation and what really ends up being in our code. OK. So now we've taken what is initially organized by sponsor. We've turned it into documents that are now organized by working body. And the committees themselves are going to start a three-week process of <coughs> reviewing this material, amending it, making recommendations, and eventually they're going to go to the city council and they're going to say, all right, city council, we suggest that you pass, say, measures one through eight that we heard this month. At that point in time, almost always the city council will, uh, takes the advice of their, of their fellow colleagues in, in the committee level. Dan said to me, he goes, what are they talking about in city council? Like, what is going on, right? Every once in a while, not everyone agrees, and that's really what they're talking about. They're talking about a committee report that's come out that contains something that somebody in city council doesn't like. But for the most part, of the 2,000 ideas that come in, 750 to 1,000 of them are going to pass in any given month. So this has been a four-week process, and as soon as that passage happens, the clerk's office then starts another metamorphosis. They're going to take all of that information, and they are going to turn it. We are going to turn it into um, a summary of what has passed. So here we go. We started with this, and we reorganize it to this. For anyone who, oh, by the way, if anyone is familiar with our website, um, the Legislative Information Center or the Councilmatic uh, website, that is a summary of this information. It's a sim summary of, of sponsors, of uh, ideas, and of committee information. This is the Journal of Proceedings. The Journal of Proceedings is the official publication of laws that have passed. We have a basic principle in the United States that you uh, cannot you cannot bind your residents or constituency to anything unless the law has been published. Obviously, it's not always easy to find, but we, we will publish it, right? And that's what this document is. It makes laws effective. Most laws that come out of the city council are effective upon passage and publication. So that's what this little book is doing. And this thing will come out about three weeks after um, a particular uh, uh, council session. So if something goes in in March, 
15th, it's probably going to pass on April 15th, and this thing will be out before the May 15th City Council meeting. Now, how useful is that? If you really think about it, so I've got some statistics here um, to help us understand this. Let's see. So, we started, uh, we started amending, for example, the rules that apply to parking in the city of Chicago in 1939. We produce 12 to 24 of these every single year. So take that time, 74 years. If you wanted to understand where you could park your car in the city of Chicago and you were going to rely on the journal, it would mean that you would have to look through approximately 1,300 books and piece it together. No one, I have a legal background, I wouldn't do it, I'll just pay the ticket, right? So um, that's where we start the process of codification. That's where AM Legal comes in, that's where our editors come in, and we start to organize 24 of these per year, over 100 years, into this. It looks a heck of a lot smaller and more concise now, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> municipalities and he's talking to publishing companies and, and he's having trouble with them. What's really going on is that the publishing company is saying, okay, this is a work product. This is, a lot of, of publishing companies are going to say, this is our intellectual property. We have, remember our parking meter example, we have filtered out that which is not municipal code, right? The contract is not permanent. It is not, it's not generally applicable, right? So that is not gonna be in here. We, once we've filtered it, we have integrated the evolving little itty bitty pieces, right? We are changing this thing literally word by word by word. Um, and we've done so in a way that's meaningful legally. There are Supreme Court cases that have been won or lost on the basis of where a comma or a semicolon so the publishing industry is saying, huh, you know, this is an expertise. Um, this is a work product. But what, what makes us different and what makes Chicago different and what makes AM Legal different and this relationship and the reason that we're able to be here today and give you guys access to this type of information is because we view the value of what they're doing. Not as, okay, we're going to sell subscriptions to our residents to read this, <laughs> right? That's not what we're saying. The city of Chicago has made a policy decision, a sweeping policy decision, that we're gonna pay for the work, pro work, for the work process to get to this very powerful, very valuable tool and that we're going to give that tool away. And American Legal Publishing ha also has, has a similar philosophy. They say, okay, we, we are experts in creating this incredibly valuable, legally relevant tool. And at that point, what you do with it is none of our business. We are happy to help you make this available in any way that you want to, to whomever you want to. Uh, and that's an incredibly important philosophy and something that this company, um, and, the, and really that the city, not just us, um, I, you know, we were in touch with, when, when Carl initially called, uh, people from the mayor's office, the Department of Law uh, is also uh, part of the, the contractual body that is involved in this process. This is a policy decision that the city of Chicago has made, and it's also a philosophy um, of American Legal Publishing Company, and that's what allows us to be here and do this for you guys. 